All right, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take an internal link and link it to something within the page itself and not in any other pages. So I'm gonna choose this featured information here, which will drop the person all the way down to the more detailed part of the class down here, World Tai Chi from the save the date little featured part here. So we're gonna enable the visual builder in Divi And we are going to scroll on down. I'm going to choose the section module. Actually, that's the row module. I'm going to go to the advanced tab, CSS ID and classes. We're going to choose ID because ID is local to the page we're on. CSS classes are global, which means it applies throughout the entire website where the ID will only apply to this particular page. So I'm going to name it world, W-O-R-L-D. I'm going to click the check mark to save it. And I chose to do the row so that the top falls to the top of this row instead of maybe the top of this or the top of this. So scroll on up. I'm going to choose to do this module instead of the row because when people are scrolling, I just want a little bit of space uh, between what they click so they don't accidentally click it. But I'm gonna go ahead and click the settings. We're gonna go down to link because this is our linked product. And we're going to put the pound sign, which references the ID. And we say W-O-R-L-D. Click the check mark, save the page. Eventually it saved. Exit the Visual Builder. And now when we click this, boom, scrolls on right down to that section. Awesome. All right, so I enabled the Builder again. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this, but we're going to do it with mostly code instead of a section, right? So I'm just going to make an example here that I'll end up deleting. We'll go ahead and pick this module. And let's say I wanted to do that down here, right? So let's say um, world Tai Chi learn more. And I probably should say something better than that, but I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this text. We're gonna go up to the link button here. And now we put in our URL here, pound world. And then within here, you can actually choose the target, which is none, is what you'd normally choose for something like this. But you also, if you were linking outward to something else, not what we have in the page, you'd click new window. But for now, we're just gonna say, okay, click this, click save, Oh, and one thing I want to show you too is what this looks like in the code. Go to text. When you're in the text tab, it'll show you the code behind it. So see, I said href equals pound world. And then you've got that. So that's the code behind what you saw earlier, where you didn't necessarily see code, but you were putting it in sections. But this is what it would look like in code if we were to see everything in code. Um, we'll go ahead and click this. Drops down. Now let's say you want something to link to a different window. So if I were to open this and we're in our modules and I click this module, most all of these link areas have a selection here if you want it to open in the same window or in a new window or new tab, they're calling it in this, in this uh, factor, but yeah. So you can do it easily like that or if you do something in code two different ways here within this editor. We can click this, go back up to the link, and then here you can choose to open new window or not. Again, I'm gonna cancel this, or with code, you'd end up writing this. Target equals underscore blank. Underscore blank is new tab. 
Now, if you don't put a target, it will default to the current window it's in. That simple. And then you save everything like normal. Now, let's say you're using the Gutenberg editor. And here, there's a different method to it, but roughly the same. Highlight the text you want to link. Maybe not that comma. Click the link button. Now, if you're going to reference a page in the website that already exists, in this case, I'll write the word soy. Everything I've written with the word soy in it is going to pop up here. See, and then I could just click one and reference that particular recipe page on the site, whatever it may be. Now the same thing would go for a button. Let's click and we're using the button module. We're going to go ahead and add our text button. We'll go ahead and click the anchor link. We'll type our, um, we'll say cheese, how about that? We'll link to our cheese recipe, and then we'll click this edit link, advanced, and you can choose here whether to open it in a new tab or not. Another thing you might not know is if you wanted to put a set of links to other things in your site, um, let's say you have posts, I'm gonna click add block, and there is a posts list. If you don't see post list, just type in post and you'll start seeing list or, you know, list. Um, or your latest post. This one will let you choose which post and this one will just give us the latest post. And what a, we do have other things here for list too, but for now we're gonna go, and you've got page list as well for pages rather than posts. But we'll go with post lists. I'm gonna go ahead and choose what I want, and since I am using Generate Press, I do have some pre-made things put together. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this layout to put in this page. Okay, once you have that on the page, there's a few things you can do. You can change it from what you see here to a grid view if you just wanna have, you know, a few. You can also, if you click this query button, and if you notice over here, and just make sure, you know, because you can select these individuals, just make sure you're selecting the entire thing. And if you're having trouble selecting the entire thing, you can click this document overview and make sure to click this post template. You can also choose the query loop itself. And the query loop is what are we bringing into here and how. Um, so if we go to post template, you can change the amount of columns to four two, three, and then you could, you know, add in more stuff from your query loop. And if we go to query loop, this is where you can order from newest to oldest. You can choose pages versus posts. Um, and you can include or not include sticky posts within these. Because sometimes you might have them on the page elsewhere. Um, so browsing between pages requires a full page reload. This is completely optional depending how you do your caching on your site, I would just leave the default. We don't have to get that involved. Filters, if you wanna filter what's shown here, let's say this is a post about cheese. You could probably just choose taxonomies, choose your categories and put cheese. So that way only cheese recipes show up under this cheese post, right? Or whatever you have under tags that you want to show up. Now let's just say you just wanted to link to one or two things in your site and, and maybe you don't want to, you know, pull in a more uh, generated loop of things, right? I'm going to delete this. Simply, all you have to do, let's say you wanted to put something here, okay? I'm going to delete this. I'm going to try one more time, delete. We're going to grab this URL from this recipe, we're gonna go back to the page, we're gonna create a new block. Um, we just wanna you know, do this. Click in here just to get a whatever. V, control V, paste, and now you've got a really nice looking, just link to you know one, one article. Maybe you can find another one under snacks or something. We'll do the hummus. You could just add another one under that. 
and press the return button. Sometimes you have to press the return button. Now you got two, two specific ones, right? Um, publish this. Let's just see what it looks like because I'm going to delete this. And then we'll view the post. And there you've got a couple of nice links rather than maybe just some little, you know, linked text, but looks a lot better.